Welcome to this lecture series in group theory. In this lecture, we will look at an application of the Cauchy Frobenius theorem. We will basically count the number of colorings of a cube, which uh, in which two colorings are considered the same if one can be obtained by rotating the other. We will precisely define the problem, but first let us recall what is the Cauchy Frobenius theorem. So if we have a finite group and a finite set and an action of the group on the set given, then the number of orbits under this action is given by this formula, where fixed G is defined as those elements of the set which are fixed by G. So that's uh, the cauchy frobenius theorem. And we also need, or rather, let us just recall what is the notion of rotation. We recently looked at this in a previous video. So it's basically those linear maps which preserve the geometry of the space and which have determinant one. So this condition is same as that. And determinant one is what gives you the rotation and not the reflections. So that's the definition of SONR, the special orthogonal group of Rn. And uh, Euler's theorem says that every element of SO3 is rotation by an axis. All right, these are two problems for practice. And uh, now let us get to the material of this lecture. So the vertices of a cube, and when we say vertices of a, of a cube, we mean this set, which is an eight element set. And uh, it's all those elements of R3 where each entry is either plus one or minus one. So it is a set which is symmetric about the origin. So yeah, so that's the cube or the vertices of the cube. And these have to be colored using a given set of n colors. And we want to know how many ways are there to do this, where we think of two colorings as the same if one can be obtained by rotating the other. So for example, suppose we color this, these eight vertices in this way, where everything is pink except for this one vertex, which I have colored yellow. And this coloring where everything is pink except for this vertex, which I have colored yellow. So these two colorings are actually the same colorings because if we rotate about this axis, which passes through the midpoints of these two faces and rotate by 90 degrees, then we get that. So these two are the same because one can be obtained uh, by rotating the other. So to formalize the problem, what we do is first we define the set X. X is equal to all maps from the cube. So let's say this, this cube is, uh, I mean, the vertices of the cube is denoted by the letter C. So all maps from C to one up to N. Think of this as the set of all the colors. So X is the set of all the colors where we have, we are not making any identifications. We are not right now considering two colorings as same if one can be obtained by rotating the other. Right now it's unconstrained. And now what we'll do is we'll act on it by the group of rotations of the cube. So G B, uh, the group be defined as those elements of SO3 such that T V belongs to C for all V belongs to C. And in a previous video, uh, who's, uh, you know, the, you can follow the link flashing on the top right corner of the screen. Uh, and in, the pre in, the, in that video, we, we saw that the size of G is 24. And in fact, we also showed that G is isomorphic to uh, S4. But all we need for this video is that the size of G is 24. It was a simple application of the orbit stabilizer theorem. All right, so uh, that's that's the group of rotations of the cube. If you just think about it, the description immediately will convince you that this is the correct notion for the group of rotations of the cube. And we will define an action of G on X as follows. So G acts on X how? Uh, G dot F. So F is some element of, if you fix an element of G, call it little g and fix an element of the set X. Then g dot f, of course, has to be an element of x, meaning it, it, it should be a map from C to the n colors. How is it defined? Uh, it's uh, basically g dot f of the vertex v is equal to f of g inverse dot v. So g inverse by g inverse dot v, I just mean g inverse of v. g inverse is a linear map, and v is an element of R3, so this makes sense. And this is how we define g dot f. So g dot f is a, is a new element of x. And you can verify that this indeed gives an action. Verify that this is indeed an action. And you'll see that this inverse matters. If we did not put this inverse, then it wouldn't be an action in the sense that we defined an action. So this inverse is just an artifact to make it an action is all. All right, uh, so that's that's uh, the definition of the action and what one needs to realize is the problem just asks us to count 
to count the number of orbits number of orbits of the action right so why is that because suppose f was this coloring where uh, you know it takes this vertex to yellow and every other vertex to pink then taking g as rotation by this axis you see that g dot f is this coloring and these are precisely the things that we want to think of as the same if you can rotate around rotate about one coloring and obtain some other coloring then those two things are to be thought of as the same and uh, that just means that things in the same orbit are considered the same so we are trying to count the number of orbits and to count the number of orbits we employ the cauchy frobenius theorem so that is what we will do next uh, the set of all the elements of g will be partitioned or classified in four different ways except for the identity the identity is its own thing but except for that the other 23 elements can be uh, classified in these four ways so the first way is where you have a your, your axis of rotation is passing through the midpoints of two opposite edges uh, and and the rotation is uh, by pi radians or 180 degree rotation all right so what we need to count is fix you know the size of the set of elements of x fixed by that basically this thing fix g if g is an element or g is this particular element we need to count fix g all right so this is what we will do for all the elements of the group and we will apply the cauchy frobenius theorem so start with identity how many such elements are there of course there is only one identity so that is one and the letter s will be used to denote the number of elements how many things in x are fixed by the identity everything and there are n to the 8 things in x so that's the size of the fix of the identity and uh, therefore 1 times n to the 8 is n to the 8 okay now we come to this guy how many such elements are there well there are a total of 12 edges in the cube and any element of this kind is obtained by considering two opposite edges so therefore there are six elements of this type and if you fix one of those elements or maybe i shouldn't use the word fix if you select one of those elements what is the size of fix g if, if g is used to denote that element well so if you're rotating by 180 degrees uh, these two vertices should obtain or should receive the same color uh, this goes to that so these two should also get the same color this goes to that under pi 180 degree rotation so these two should have the same color and similarly these two should have the same color so the way i have depicted it the pink things should receive the same color white things should receive the same color and so on so how many elements of x does this particular element fix you can put any uh, you know choose a color and both of them you can assign the same thing then these to the same thing these to the same thing and those to the same thing so it's n times n times n times n that is n to the power 4 so all of uh, those things will be fixed and uh, therefore this is this s times fixed g is 6 n to the power 4 all right what about the second kind the second kind is those rotations which are obtained by joining two opposite vertices or rotating by the axis passing through or line passing through two opposite vertices and the rotation is either by 120 degrees or 240 degrees in this case uh, if suppose you're having 120 degree rotation then these three vertices the things which are colored yellow in my coloring should receive the same color the white things they should also receive the same color because they cycle around and you can put any color here and any color here so first of all how many how many uh, elements of this type are there either 2 pi by 3 or 4 pi by 3 is exactly the same analysis so there are eight vertices in the cube <coughs> and any such axis is obtained by joining two opposite vertices so there are four rotations of the type where you rotate by 120 degrees and four of the type where you rotate by 240 degrees so there are a total of eight such things i hope i'm not making a mistake so this is eight vertices four plus four eight yes correct and what is fixed g well again there are four different colors that one can use these three have to receive the same color these three have to receive the same color and these two whatever colors so n into n into n into n which is n to the power four therefore this is eight times n to the power four the third kind is those rotations where you consider an axis which passes through the midpoints of two opposite faces and you're rotating either by 90 degrees or 270 degrees uh, okay so 
it's the same story how many such elements are there there are six faces joining two opposite of them gives us three kinds of axes and since we are allowed two different kinds of rotations it means six such elements so this is a six and uh, once you fix let's say pi by two rotations and this axis all of these four vertices should receive the same color if you want to fix a coloring and <coughs> similarly for these four vertices so n times n is n squared and we get 6n squared. All right, the fourth kind is where you join, you know, your axis is obtained by joining two, the, the midpoints of two opposite faces and you're rotating by pi, you know, 180 degrees. So in this case, these two should receive the same color, those two the same color, these two the same color, and those two the same color. How many such things are there? Basically six such things are there. Sorry, not six, three such things are there, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, there are only three such things. So this is a three. And, uh, Fixed G is n times n times n times n times n, that is n to the power 4. So that is 3 n to the power 4. So to check that we have accounted for all the possible elements of the group, let's just add these things. So 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 6 is 20, plus 3 is 23, plus 1 is 24. And since the size of the group is 24, this actually does account for all the group elements. And now finally all we need to do is add this and divide by 24. So 1 upon size of g, summation g in the group, fixed g, is nothing but 1 upon 24, n to the 8 plus 6 n to the 4 plus 8 n to the 4 plus 6 n square plus 3 n to the 4. I need to shift it. which is equal to 1 upon 24, n to the 8 plus 8, 6, 14, 3, 17, n to the 4 plus 6, n squared. So this is the total number of colorings, which are, uh, you know, total number of ways to color the vertices of the cube where you identify two colorings if one can be obtained by rotating the other. And this is not the kind of answer one obtains by pure guesswork. This does take careful and proper analysis. So I hope you like this application. I for one like it. And with that, I want to end this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe. I also have Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.